everyone, I hope you're keeping well. In this week's video, I'm gonna be talking about something that I get asked about all of the time. How I go about finding locations. And of course, sometimes I'm hunting out relics and ruins, and that's exactly what I'm doing in this episode. Coming up this weekend, I've got the start of my second Romania trip of the year, photography, workshop, and tour, starting in Timisoara, ending in Bucharest. I've actually come out rurally into the southern corridor of Romania, so going towards the Bulgaria border, and I'm looking for fillers. And what I mean by that is my main locations are sorted, but to get from point A to point B, I need stuff to do during the day. And if you can find spots in rural locations such as this, there can really be amazing photography opportunities along the way. So I'm gonna be giving you some tips on finding the places, going out to them, which, when to kind of draw the line on kind of draw the location off, information, how we go about the researching, and then of course the actual scouting live, which is what we're doing over the course of this evening and then tomorrow morning in fresh photography locations. Let's do it. I've got to get there. I'm about five minutes away from checking out the first one, getting in the car. Architecture locations are all around us, sometimes concealed, sometimes in plain sight, but they're all waiting to be discovered. Now, when I'm talking about photography locations, I'm not talking about your mate shared a pin with you, you've used Google Lens or any of these kind of things. I'm actually talking about fresh spots, going off of slivers of research or slivers of information and then trying to go there, work it out for yourself and see if there's photography to be had. Now this one looks like it's actually a live church, so it looks like fail number one, because live churches in this manner are usually very locked up, but we'll check it out for ourselves. So of course, when it comes to Romania, it's a country that's been on my radar for a while, but usually if it's a completely fresh country, then this is a little bit different, but generally the rules apply. I'm normally researching in advance. So I first came to Romania for ready in preparation for my first photography tour in April of this year, I started coming in 2022. And I'd done personal trips before that too, all the way back to sort of 2017 period, so a long time. Now, whenever I'm kind of looking to go to a place for the first time, I start, of course, on Google. And there is generally a lot of clues you can find on there. You can do Google Alerts, for example, and put in keywords to do with uh, places becoming derelict, run down, disused. Maybe it's even the case of the building itself has become, is gonna be renovated soon and there's an article about it in the local press. These days, the local press does tend to be online, so they're easy to find. And that's usually the starting point. Other things that you could use is not just local press, is when you're looking, you can look on heritage registers. You can look on, uh, for example, Orthodox church websites. There's many resources that you can come across when you start looking. Normally, once you find a picture of one, the sort of thing that you're looking for, you can kind of cross-reference that and start finding multiple as well over on the internet. Once I've located those though, then of course, we need to go further than that, delve deeper. Let's get to the next location and we'll talk about that. Monuments, historical sites, heritage buildings are often maintained by government agencies, cultural organisations or more, historical societies for example. Each country typically has their databases catalogued. Crowdsource maps are also another way to look at things, things like Wikimapia and also old websites like Flickr and OpenStreetMap.org. Google Maps as well are also got crowdsourced maps and online locations are frequently listed, making them a viable tool for explorers and people scouting new areas. Street View. Google Maps also has the ability to use Street View. Sometimes if it's a new location for me and the Street View has rolled up into that area, I use Street View to be able to cruise through the city, especially in larger built up areas, to be able to find locations too. Actually doing this, like Google Earth, can really assist you in your pre-scouting. Once you find one, actually it can be quite easy to link these things together. Find a ghost town, for example. In there, there could be a theater, a hospital, or a church, a monastery, and more. Find a church. There could easily be a side building to that, a theater, a community center, and more. The list goes on. So don't just give up on the initial building. There could be more located beside it. I say I found something on the internet, right? I found some bit of information. I might then easily be able to find the location using Google and actually just pin it on a map 
and other times it might be more difficult to pinpoint the exact building. I use a combination of Google Maps, Google Earth to check the you know, surroundings, the area, zoom on in, zoom on out and just check around. If it's an easy one to find, then I just pin it, put it on the map to go to a later date. Other times though, it might be that I've actually got to do a little bit more. It might be that I'm looking for shapes of the structure and I'm kind of cross reference it all the time to kind of check, is it gonna be the building that I need? So for example, in this one, this was a church that I had pinned for a while, I believe actually. And I've come on down here and obviously it's a locked up building, but it is actually still in use, but not as a church. It's now like a crematorium essentially. Now that's okay, but to actually find this building, that wasn't as easy because this isn't pinned on Google. So actually what I've then had to do is scour this little town, this village after finding the article and look for the shape of the building on Google Maps and Google Earth and then just pin it that way. Of course I knew it was a church, so likelihood it was gonna be near some, you know, some churchyard or some crypts or maybe it's just uh, in the center of the town. Once I've done the shapes and I've worked out the structure, of course, again, I pin it to go to a later date. Easy as that. Okay, so it's on the map. It's ready to go. Now I'm going to the country and I put that scouting pins, all the pins that are on that map and on that tab into one section on my map ready to kind of scout in person. Now I kind of prioritize the ones that I know that I need to actually visit. Now I basically look through if they've got a lot of information, if I've found information on the internet, say for example, a key holder's phone number, or I know for a fact it's fully abandoned and it's a ruin or a relic or something, then that one I don't need to scout as much. But for ones like this, where I don't know that much more about them, just a pin, a little article, then I probably need to scout it. now. I prioritize that in basically now I prioritize that based on like am I going to be needing this pin soon? Am I going to be going into that area? And I try to locate it. Now I made a mistake and I've actually got the wrong charger with me for my laptop, which is annoying. I'm going to run back to Istanbul, pick it up ready for my tour at the weekend. And when I do that, that means that I'm driving from Timisoara now to Bucharest over two days, and I'm coming this route, meaning that I'm kind of scouting in advance of my March tour next year, not actually the one that's coming up. So I'm kind of always looking to work ahead when it comes to scouting. So thinking ahead. Now some things, once I've scouted them of course, are not fit for photography tours, but they are fine for me to photograph. It depends on the state of it, it depends on how complicated it is to get in, and I prioritise that in a completely different criteria, but essentially I always try to look for two amazing locations or two nice unique locations a day on a photo tour but when it comes to a personal trip sometimes they're just ideal for video only or just photography only and i assess that once i get into the space so here for example it might be really small once we get inside and you can see here it is locked up there's the key but this sort of location these days is what i'm looking for because i know that in there it's not trashed it's not wrecked it's not ruined and that is a good thing because there's no graffiti, it's going to be in good condition. So I'm looking for this style of location. Now, I'm actually not going to try and get in here today because I'm probably going to come back to this area, like I said, at a later date. But the thing is for me, this one might take a bit of time, like I said, and I haven't got time. I've got to get to my next location, which is one that's taken me ages to find. I did use Google Earth but we're gonna photograph it together, let's move. Now, there's a lot of mosquitoes about. Okay, so I've just rocked up to the final location for today, for today's scout. And you can see it just there in the background. Now imagine this one on Google Earth, Google Maps and so on. It's overgrown, there's trees growing out of the top of it. And that means of course, it's incredibly difficult to locate on Google Earth. And that's the reason why we go scouting. We go scouting so that we can go check it out in person. Also, I love locations like this. It's in the middle of nowhere, really rural, remote. But these ones are the difficult ones to find and that's why you've got to scout them in person, go and have a look. Have you done the right job? Have you scouted in advance? Are things as they should be? That's essentially it. I'm gonna get on in there because it's, uh, you can see the sun's dropping. I wanna get some photos and uh, see if we can uh, wrap this up and give you some more tips about location finding once we get a little bit closer. Of course, if someone's on your scouting list, 
for a workshop or tour or to return back later and get better images, that can work in your favor because when you go back the second time, your images tend to be much, much better. You can also work out things like this, time of day, sun's direction, does it help your image making out? There's many things that go into the scouting side of things. It's way more overgrown than I thought. It's absolutely nuts. There's blueberries all over it, I'm nearly there. I'm fully in the, I'm fully in the trees here. Last little bit. Oh, look, look at the blueberries. Pretty cool. Loads of them, nearly there. See, this is the things you don't see when you're scouting. You've got to check out all this. Now, this is a bit of a nightmare. Oh, yes, it is the one I wanted. Looking amazing. But incredibly difficult to get to. Let's get inside. course this is another reason why you scout locations uh, accessibility issues is it easy is it difficult there's many reasons let's get in love this style of location like I said earlier but they are trickier to find I mean they're worth the effort there's always a chance they're going to be overgrown I mean it's completely disused it's you know it's a, it's a ruin more than a an actual abandoned place but it's got beautiful frescoes but I'm gonna to have to sort of like embed myself into some of this vegetation to try and capture what it is that I want now the light I've timed it perfectly and that's the other thing about this style of location I knew that late in the day would be great I've got just enough light here that there's no horrible light on the building, but it's gonna allow me enough time to get good photos inside. So I need to crack on to do that. And I'm gonna hopefully be able to do it primarily with uh, my wide angle lens, but it's, there's a chance that I do it with a tilt shift. Let's have a little look. I need to bury myself in here. We don't have anywhere near enough width. I need a lot, lot more width. So overgrown here now behind me that I'm gonna need the full width of the 17 to get it what I want in. So, let's switch out. Okay, when it comes to some, some takeaways for you from this in terms of location finding is, is frustrating. And it can definitely be difficult to get out there and search for something new. But in the long run, it's incredibly worth it because the images that you capture tend to be unique. They look like a different perspective than what's been seen before because the location's like kind of new location. And I'm not saying that every location I ever photograph is new. The bit that I enjoy of this is the going out searching, looking, the hunting for the new location. So that's something to bear in mind. It's like, it's a different part of the photography, but it's a challenge that I you know, enjoy nonetheless. And that's the thing. You've got to be patient with architecture photography and to get the kind of images that you want, unique, fresh images, you definitely need to be, you know, that kind of way inclined. Now, because there's a little bit of vegetation here in the foreground, I'm just gonna boost my ISO up to get it nice and static. I don't want, you know, trees moving in the wind. That's not something that I'm into, really. Um, so I'm just gonna recapture that. Locals often know about hidden gems that might not be documented online. For example, here in Romania, I actually spoke to Florin, my workshop driver. He actually guided me into where two areas might be for mansions and church ruins, hence the video we're looking at today. I'm just gonna wrap up my final image here. I've actually decided to go for a nice 17 mil shot, just showing the fresco on the far wall here. I'm gonna probably crop some of the bottom off in post. It's getting a little bit dark and I wanna wrap up here. So I'm gonna continue this video tomorrow morning when I'll give you more tips.
So the final tip I'm going to give you is when to post to social media and when not to. That decision for me is crucial. I don't publish everything straight away, especially if it's locations that I'm scouting for future workshops and tours like I was doing here. Knowing when not to post can really help you in the future. The next two locations were spectacular the following morning. I've decided to keep them offline for now. Hopefully you've taken away some tips there about location, finding, hunting, looking for stuff and how I go about it. Of course, this is just one element of what I do. I mean, churches are actually fairly easy to find. Most of them are registered and listed. Uh, so of course, it makes the job a little bit easier. Over the years, people have documented churches more and more. Things like mansions, houses, castles, this sort of stuff is of course much harder, especially if they're private. Omni though, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope you've taken something away.